All right, now that we have our objects inside the scene, let's be sure that we have a light in the scene to be able to light everything up. So we'll go to the hierarchy and create. And inside of it, you'll see one that says light. Go down to the directional light. When you click on it, you'll place a light inside the scene. Also, by default, you should notice that the light toggle button comes on. When it was off, it looks like this. When you place a light in the scene, it just simply turns this one on. Uh, what we're going to do is make sure that a couple of things happen with the light. We're going to just go kind of basic with it here. Um, but we do want to have some shadows. So over in the inspector, if your directional light is selected, notice if I don't have it selected, there's no properties. If I left click and select the directional light, I'll have my properties in the inspector. Each component, again, has the basic set of properties for them. Well, the light component is going to have one called shadow type. If you click on the drop down and choose soft shadows, you'll notice now that you have a set of shadows coming from your objects. Also, there is a strength set of uh, a range values here. And the range, I'm just going to take the range and set it to 0.5. That way our, um, our shadows right here are a little bit softer. Uh, with the light inside the scene and it's setting up like this, um, one of the things you may notice is if you zoom in and out on your light, the icon itself um, gets larger and larger. Um, also the grid is inside the scene. Now there's two, those are two things that I usually don't use for uh, basic projects. Um, which is the uh, dynamic scaling of a icon. On the scene tab, let's go ahead and just take a look at this. If we go over to our gizmo and click on the gizmo button. So if you left click on gizmo button, you're going to notice that everything inside of here are optional properties to be able to be seen or not seen inside of your edit mode. I'm going to go to the one that says 3D gizmos up at the top. And left click on the checkbox to turn it off. Now the icon size is going to stay the same. And then the show grid option, I'm just going to uncheck this one as well. If you click off of it, it'll go away or you can click back on it to uh, take it back up. Once we have that, we have a little bit cleaner of a scene now. So with the scene set up, with our light inside the scene, last thing on our hierarchy is going to be to just create two empty game objects so that we can actually place the rest of our actors and objects inside of them. On the hierarchy create, you have one called create empty. Your hotkey, control shift in, or just create empty right here. We're going to rename the game object. We'll create one called scene static. And then we can use control D to make a copy of our selected object as well. So control D and we can say scene dynamic. So we'll have anything that's not going to be physics objects or scripting objects. It's just simply uh, static filler objects. We'll place inside of here. And then dynamic objects, then again, it'll be physics objects, component-based objects. The uh, scene and static, notice the positions are actually not at zero. You can select both. You can select both by left-clicking on a static and then holding control and left-clicking on scene and we can affect multiple objects at the same time. So now we've moved both the objects over to 0, 0, 0. With these objects, let's go ahead and drag the rest of our game objects into them. So static, let's say it's going to be directional light. So I'm just going to hold control, left click on main camera and ground. We'll place those inside of static. And then all the objects we'll play with We'll place those inside of our scene dynamic. Now, the labeling for these, this can be very different based on the project or just based on uh, each developer. You may have your different words you'd like to use for them. Now that we have our setup for our hierarchy, we now have all of our basic objects we need. Let's do one other thing, our main camera. Notice that the camera, if you click on it, you'll see the little camera preview right here. The camera preview, it doesn't actually show what we would want for the scene. So let's go ahead and rotate our scene itself to an angle that's just slightly above and slightly zoomed out like this. So I'm going to move it where it's just a little bit of an angle so I can see everything going on. With the main camera selected, you can go over to your game object and go down to the one that says align with view. Your hotkey is control shift F. 
If you click on it, you'll notice that your camera now aligns itself with the scene view. So now you have the camera view. If you click on the game tab, you'll notice the game tab is now mimicking the same angle as this one. So be sure to get the camera set up close to that. Make sure it looks similar to it. If you have everything basically set up with those, then we have our light in the scene, we have a ground plane, we've got our directional light, everything set up for this. And in our scene, the characters and the objects, let's move these a little bit further away and then double check on the ground plane. Now we have a shadow. You can actually kind of base how much closer you can get to it on the visual side. We're, we're again, we're, we're not trying to find exact numbers or anything here. We're just trying to free uh, freehand it, freeform it. I'm going to select both of the objects, the turret top and base, and then we'll move these where it's just kind of intersecting the ground a little bit. I'll move these back a little bit. All right. And I'll move these off to the side there. So there we go. So we've got all the objects a little bit further apart from each other. That way when we work on them, we can just kind of focus on each one and see those. The light itself, uh, you could actually move the light direct, uh, directly up out of the scene being a directional light no matter how far away you move uh, unless you change the option for it uh, you can actually move it just simply out of the way now notice like for my move tool it, this one may be the same for yours is when you select it it's showing the angle of the local direction you can actually instead of local you can change it to global up here on the top so I can go back and forth between them and then just move it straight up. This is going to be world coordinate moving and the other is based on the object. If the object's angled, then that's the direction you can move it. Okay, so we'll move it up out of the way like that. Alright, so now we have all of our scene set up. Everything's pretty much ready at this point. The one thing that we're going to want to do next is set up a few of the different colors and materials for these objects.